The blood that travels through the atria and the ventricles of the heart do not supply the cardiomyocytes with the oxygen, glucose, and nutrients required for continuous aerobic respiration. Instead, two major coronary arteries supply blood to the heart muscle. All arteries, however, are susceptible to the problem of atherosclerosis, the formation of a fatty acid plaque called an atheroma in the arterial wall. The endothelial layer can rupture from stress and triggers the formation of a clot, or thrombus, which can block the entire artery, called an occlusion. Although very uncommon, alternatively, a thrombus can form elsewhere in the body, such as in the deep veins of the leg, and then travel through the bloodstream. This is known as an embolus, and if it blocks the coronary artery, it is called an embolism. In both cases, the cardiomyocytes are not receiving blood and die immediately. The person suffers a heart attack. There are three stages to clot formation. Stage 1, platelet plug formation. Normally, endothelial cells release protective chemicals to prevent clotting, including nitric oxide, prostacyclin, a lipid used in cell signaling, and a special intermediate complex called CD39. These inhibit the adhesion of platelets, fragments of the cytoplasm, to the endothelial cells. When the tissue ruptures, the concentration of these substances drop. The collagen layer underneath the endothelium cells is exposed, which releases another chemical called GP1A to allow the platelets to stick to the arterial wall. Surrounding endothelial cells synthesize a chemical called von Willebrand factor, a glycoprotein that helps to accumulate the platelets together by forming covalent bonds between receptors of adjacent platelets. Furthermore, the platelets produce a chemical called thromboxane, which signals other platelets to come to the wound site. The platelets seal the rupture. Stage 2. Coagulation The endothelial cells release another protector chemical called tissue plasminogen activator, or TPA, which is inversely proportional to the concentration of thrombin, a protein enzyme. As a result, when the tissue breaks, there are less endothelial cells, so there is a decrease in the concentration of TPA. The platelets also express thrombin receptors to bring more thrombin molecules. Both factors allow an increase in thrombin to hydrolyze a protein called fibrinogen by cleaving off part of the protein structure. This forms a molecule called fibrin, which polymerizes very quickly. Hydrogen bonding and van der Waal forces occur between the distal nodules and between the central and distal nodules, although evidence suggests that electrostatic forces of attraction are also responsible. This forms a mesh-like structure over the platelets. Stage 3. Stabilization the primary sequence of fibrin contains glutamine and lysine amino acids. Thrombin can activate an enzyme called factor X3 and transform it into another enzyme called factor X3A. This covalently bonds the carboxyl group of the glutamine and the amine group of the lysine to form an isopeptide bond. On a macromolecular scale, these cross-links between the fibrin proteins cause the entire clot to become rigid and stable from any mechanical or chemical stress. This increases the degree of the occlusion and damage to the artery. At the hospital, clot-busting drugs are firstly administered. Thrombolytics are drugs that dissolve the blood clot by increasing the concentration of TPA near the coronary artery. TPA is a protein that stimulates the endothelial cells to release plasminogen, which is a protein that can be enzymatically converted into a serine protease called plasmin. This can cleave the fibrin network and dissolve the entire clot in a process called thrombolysis. Its active site contains the amino acid serine, which contains a hydroxyl group and attacks the peptide bond in a protein as a nucleophile. Water also enters to hydrolyze the complex formed so that the peptide bond is completely broken and the enzyme is regenerated. This is why it is inversely proportional to the concentration of thrombin, since TPA will be present as thrombin becomes absent. The thrombus dissolves into smaller components called fibrin degradation products, which are then hydrolyzed by other protein enzymes in the kidney or liver. This drug is administered within the first 30 minutes upon arriving at the hospital. However, Using the drug depends on your age and medical history, including the type of heart attack suffered. People with high blood pressures will have a large cardiac output through the coronary artery. If the thrombus dissolves, there will be a greater amount of hemorrhaging occurring in the heart, then allowing the clot to dissolve naturally by white blood cells. This can lead to more blood clots developing. Thus, thrombolytics are only administered for patients with large thrombi or few medical conditions.
Antiplatelet drugs prevent the platelets from amalgamating together. One of the most common drugs is aspirin, which belongs to a category called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, which includes ibuprofen, naproxen, and the like. Platelets use an enzyme to produce thromboxane, and aspirin inhibits this enzyme. Thus, less thromboxane can be produced, and so less platelets clump together. Aspirin is most recommended of the NSAIDs for the antiplatelet effect lasts for several days. This is because, unlike the other NSAIDs, aspirin irreversibly inhibits the enzyme by chemically altering the intermolecular bonds, such as disulfide bridges and ionic bonds, which make up the unique active site shape. Other drugs such as Riopro belong to a category called GP2B or GP3A inhibitors and work by inhibiting platelet receptors that respond to numerous chemicals aforementioned. Because this receptor is integral to a number of chemical pathways, Riopro type drugs are the most potent of all antiplatelet drugs. In acute myocardial infarction, Riopro is given almost immediately to the patient and takes effect in minutes. This is accompanied with aspirin in moderate doses to reduce any further clotting elsewhere. After the myocardial infarction, aspirin is prescribed in lower doses to reduce the risk of future heart attacks, heart failure, or to alleviate angina. Anticoagulants work to prevent the coagulation of blood by affecting the concentration of the clotting factors produced in the liver. For instance, we mentioned factor X3A forms crosslinks between fibrin monomers. Warfarin is commonly prescribed and belongs to a class called vitamin K antagonists. Many leafy green vegetables contain vitamin K. A reduced form of vitamin K oxidizes to vitamin K epoxide by donating a pair of electrons to drive a carboxylation reaction of proteins that go on to form clotting factors. The inactive vitamin K is then reduced to its active form by an enzyme. Warfarin inhibits this enzyme preventing the reduction of vitamin K epoxide. A scientist named Silverman proposed that the warfarin molecule was susceptible to electrophilic addition by the enzyme, which meant sulfur groups or other variable groups necessary to the active site were covalently bonded to the warfarin. Recent experimental data has instead suggested that warfarin binds to the sulfhydryl functional group. Regardless, the vitamin K cycle cannot proceed, meaning that the clotting factors cannot be synthesized. However, the thrombus can still form without clotting factors, and so anticoagulants prevent a clot from getting larger. Anticoagulants are most often given alongside antiplatelet drugs, because while the platelets disperse, any clotting factors can stimulate the platelets to recombine. They take effect after five to seven days, since existing factors need to break down first, there is no required dose of warfarin because the rate of blood clotting is unique to everybody. Blood plasma is extracted from the patient and mixed with a protein called thromboplastin to coagulate the blood. The time for this can be used in a standardized formula, which has been obtained from repeated titrations against blood clots. This isn't the complete treatment of a myocardial infarction. Clot-busting therapy deals with the actual occlusion of the coronary artery. But another set of drugs are given to improve cardiac performance and output. Those will be covered another time.